Welcome back. This week we're going to go with Kelly Galp's Articulated Butt Monkey. Um, this is a pattern that I overlooked for a little while. Um, I tied a ton of them, caught my first bull trout on this pattern uh, back five, five years ago, five plus years ago maybe. Um, and uh, it was one of my favorites for the longest time and then you know I gravitated toward other patterns, started designing my own and then uh, this one kind of disappeared which was a, a foul on me. Um, two falls ago we were out fishing the Madison on the, on the fall run October you know a nice cloudy overcast day just conditions were absolutely perfect everything that you would want on a, on an October day like that and um, it was tough couldn't move any fish couldn't move any fish um, was having a really tough day took a break went back to the truck for a little bit looked in some of the fly boxes and there it was the, the butt monkey and I put the black butt monkey on and probably within 10 minutes two fish right at 20 or a little better than um, and you know from from there on that fly has constantly been back in the rotation um, like I said it probably never should have been because it's such, such a great pattern um, but we're gonna do this one today in in my favorite color to tie in fish this one in um, we're gonna do this one in black um, I tie these mainly, I'll do some rust, you know, rust and cream, uh, olive, tan, um, and then every once in a while I'll throw in some, some one-off colors, maybe some gray or something like that, but not, not too often. Typically I stick to those four colors and that's about it. But like I said, this black is my favorite, so we're going to go ahead and tie this one today. Um, pretty quick pattern, so we'll get through this one uh, relatively quick, but um, we'll... Uh, speak to some of the things that can help speed this up um, as we go through it. So to start on this one, gel spun 100 as always we're just going to get a quick thread base down. Now when I do the other colors, anything other than black, um, I'm typically going to throw a toner plume of marabou underneath so it's going to be uh, yellow on the uh, all of probably a cream on the rust and with a tan sometimes I'll throw sometimes a cream sometimes yellow sometimes I'll just go straight tan uh, whatever you decide to go with on that is fine but um, I'm gonna go ahead and like I said this one's just gonna be two black marabou plumes today I'm gonna get this measured out here I'm gonna have this sitting a little bit longer than the length of the hook and I'm just gonna tie this in and a lot of you're probably thinking while well, he's prepared he actually picked his marabou out and has it sorted and everything's ready to go I would like to say that's the case but I forgot to turn on the damn microphone I got halfway through the back half of the fly and had to start over so I wasn't prepared can't even lie about it so between our two stacks of marabou we're going to go with some flash and this is just black flash abou if you want to use crystal flash whatever it may be uh, go ahead whatever you're comfortable with whatever's available um, i like the the flash abou on these i'm going to wet that so it cooperates with me here a little bit and i'm going to take that about three quarters of the way back the marabou double it over and come around on the opposite side tie that off and then trim that with the last or with the other stack there we go just adding some bulk throughout this now what I was explaining in the other one before I realized that the camera wasn't on that when you're tying these in, sometimes if you get a piece of marabou that's a little too bulky um, and you go and tie this in and your thread wrap isn't absolutely secure, um, one, you picked away, you picked off way too much marabou. It'll have a tendency to want to roll on you. You want to make sure that you have these sparse. Like you'll notice, I'll just pick one of these out right now as if this was one that I was going to be using. And that's pretty sparse right there. Let's go with this one. I wouldn't use this one typically, 
but it has it shows a good example as to what not to do so I'm going to take this and I'll set this up against my hand right here and you can see these tips how they're nice and lined up through the top that's about where I would pick my marabou to tie in for a tail material if I go bringing these ones up next thing you know you wind up having a fan right here and that's going to show up in your tail and it's not going to give you quite the whip that you want so what you want to do is just make sure that you pick these out right here and then take that and that's all you're using right there is just that for your tail section like I was saying another thing that can happen when you when you bring that entire bundle up what can happen is you're gonna have too big of a bunch to get your thread to clamp down to that hook so that marabou is gonna have a tendency to roll on you and your fly is gonna wind up tracking all over the place so make sure that you take the time select your material pick them and tie it in properly tie it in right that way your flies consistently are going to act the same way and it's just the little things that'll go a long way to to helping you create or helping you tie those flies that are repeat myself consistent with what you're after so now after that little marabou rant there we're going to go into the portion of this fly that gives it the the motion that is just so unique in this in this pattern um, we're gonna tie in some black rabbit strips and I want to find a section in here that's nice and clean I'm just gonna cut this right here sometimes I bought these in a pack typically I don't buy them in uh, or when I do buy them in a pack I'll just hang them out and let them set for a while and they'll kind of uncoil if you look at this first section where it was all twisted up in the packaging and everything it's going all over the place you got some hair going there some over there now once it gets wet it's not going to make a huge difference but i don't know i like the flies to to look good when they're in the fly box you know because the second it hits the water it never is going to look the same as what it does when it comes off the vise but it's a confidence thing. You always pick out the prettier ones. At least I try to. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just take and measure this hide out. I want it going about the length of my hook. I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra room as you can see right here. I don't want to short myself. I'm not worried about losing, you know, a quarter, half an inch, whatever it may be. I want enough to where I'm able to tie that off. But before I do that, like I said, I'm just coming through here and I'm finding a nice clean spot. I'm going to wet my finger there and get those fibers going back. And you can see I have that nice clean spot right there where it's just hide that I'm tying in. I have the two materials separated. And I want to tie this in just one, two, and then a third. That's going to be sitting back. And then I'm coming right in front of that hide. And I'm going to start, or I'm going to tie in my body material. This is just a black Estaz. It has some of the UV properties. It has the blacks and purples. And a little bit of shine to it. I tend to use this more so than um, like a polar chenille, or not a polar chenille, but a uh, dubbing or cactus chenille, anything like that. I tend to go with the Estaz for the most part. So now I'm just going to take this off, or I'm just going to run that up to the front, and we're going to half hitch, and we're going to tie that off. Now before I go and advance on a thread here, find myself a razor blade I'm gonna get all of these materials out of the way so you're able to see exactly what I'm doing when I measure this out what I do and hopefully the camera's gonna pick that up I'm gonna rotate just a little bit there 
I'm gonna take my razor blade, I'm gonna bump it right up against my marabou, and then I'm just taking that razor blade and going up through the hide. That way my hide ends consistently where my marabou tails end. I have this little bit extra in the back that's gonna give me some extra motion on that marabou. And then I'm gonna peel this back out of the way and I have everything sitting how I want it. I'm gonna bring this one around. I want one wrap going right over top of this. I'm actually not even gonna do that one not even going to do that one i'm going to bring this there you can see i have just a little bit of thread sitting back there by the time this gets wet it's not going to make any difference whatsoever i'm going to get two to three wraps pinch all of your material here pinch your hide pinch your marabou all that stuff and then just work your way forward three to four wraps secure it. I'm going to get one more in there. I think that'll work. Okay, now I'm going to bring this back over the top and you're going to see you're going to have a nice seamless transition here. Because you peeled all that material back when you were doing, when you were tying in the rabbit strips for this back section. When you tied that in, you separated the materials you had just a hide to tie in, and now there's a seamless transition going right through there. What I was thinking about doing was going around the marabou, or around the rabbit with one, with one turn, just so I could cover up that back section, but I'd wind up creating a little bit of a gap right there. So I don't want to have that gap. I'll deal with you can't even see it now in this back section. If I move the estaz back, you can see a little bit of white there from where I tied it in, but guess what? We can fix that real quick. Done. Done. Or if you're using black thread, that'll, that'll make it even easier. But, so now I'm gonna gauge where my thread is gonna be, or where my hide is gonna meet the eye. And I'm gonna peel that stuff back just slightly. I'm going to go one wrap over the top, right in front of my eye, one, two, a third, get the rabbit out of my nose, and you can see we have a nice clean eye to work with there. I'm going to throw a half hitch in real quick before I whip finish. We're good, and we're good. So now before I take that out of the vise, I'm just going to take my marker here and I'm going to touch up my thread. Get that out of the way and I'm going to bring my razor blade back. There we go. Make sure that you don't touch up your thread or anything like that. Um, stay high enough above the eye to where you're not going to go running into your thread. And uh, that way you're not going to cut it and have to restart the whole thing. I'm just going to get rid of some of that, but it doesn't really make a big difference. Now I'm going to go into the connection portion, and this is what makes this... Um, this is what Kelly did on this pattern. Um, he was the one that articulated it, put the lead eyes on it. As it started out, it was a Scott Smith and uh, Bob Linsman pattern, and they used it a lot for, uh, for brookies. Um, this was a, from everything that I read, was a brook tr trout magnet back in the day. But like I said, there was no articulation, there was no lead eyes. Kelly was the one that articulated it and put the weight on and the rest, as they say, is history. So now I'm going to go into the front hook on this one. I'm going to get, like I said, this is an MFC 7050 size 2. The back was a size 4. 
I'm just gonna lay a quick thread base down here so I can articulate it and get my lead eyes on there. Everything's looking pretty clean so far. Now with black, I almost always go with the red lead eyes. It just sets it off. Um, it, it just looks so much better to me. Um, olive, I go with yellow. Tan, I'll go with either one. White, black, um, always red. Unless I'm using the MFC blue eyes. Sometimes I, I like the way that those look, especially with the gray and the whites. Those look really sharp. But whatever color you use, if you want to go yellow, if you want to go green, white, whatever it may be, entirely up to you. Somewhere or another. I got some zap laying around, but yeah, I can't find it. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of gel in here. This is some Loctite. Typically I throw the zap in there. It dries a little bit quicker, but it's hiding from me. So There we go. All right. Once again, we're just securing these eyes in place. A little bit of glue to set them in make sure that they're sitting how you want them but look underneath there they're lined up real good now I'm going to take the back half of this fly and we're going to tie this one in I'm going to get the I'm going to get the wire, make sure that they're running parallel. And same thing as always, well, typically how we go with these, the width of your bead, the width of your eye right there, or the width of your connection in the back. So now I'm just going to move this forward, double it over. These ones are a little bit short. I had these cut for tenant tubes. And I just swiped it so I could not have to cut a piece during the video. And they're just a little bit short, but they're still going to work. There we go. Now I'm going to tie this off and I'm going to go back to the gel spun. this in place and now what we're going to do is build the skirt on this fly I'm going to go back to that rabbit strip that I took before that was all twisted all over the place and I'm just going to pick off of that and this is what I'm going to use for the skirt on this pattern I'm going to take just a little bit of rabbit here and I want this going into that rabbit section on the back hook just slightly covering it up maybe a quarter of an inch uh, quarter inch of coverage will will be just fine I'm gonna put one on this side I'm gonna put one on the opposite side I'm not gonna worry about doing one on the top um, because we're going to have another rabbit strip going over the top of this one. So we're just going to put one on each side here. I'm gonna trim that off again. Set that off. Make sure that we have the same distance on these. And I'm going to just turn this around and go one, two, secure that in place. And we're ready for our body material. We're going to tie in the body material. Same thing as before. This is just a black estaz. Get 
that secure, tying in only the cotton. And I'm going to take this just behind the eyes here. I'm going directly behind, well, not directly behind. I probably have an eighth of an inch from my eyes to where I left off with my thread. That's going to allow me to one tie in the other overwing of rabbit and still work the marabou, or not the marabou, but the ram's wool head. So we're just going to take a couple of wraps around there. Make sure you squeezing everything again just tighten that up a couple more wraps anchor it and you can see we're going to leave off right where our thread marker was get a few in there to secure that cut that tight or cut that off and then we're going back with our black rabbit strip here make sure that i like that a little bit of static making that fly all over the place and now all I'm going to do is just cut a wedge into this nothing real aggressive these are magnum strips so I mean they're a quarter inch wide um, they can tend to be a little bulky when you tie them in but nothing unmanageable so like I said I just cut that little bit of a wedge in there but I want to make sure that I still come around and I catch that other section that isn't wedged it's just a little bit easier to tie that in clean when you're working with a taper as opposed to just a blunt squared off piece of hide so there you can see the distance that we're working with right there now the same thing that I did before with the razor blade I'm going to do again the only difference is my measurements changed. You can see where this one starts. Right here, our skirt's covering that up. I'm coming back about a quarter of an inch right there. Measure that out, and then it sits right over top for me. Basically, what I want is my hide stopping about a quarter of an inch back, and that's a little bit too long, to be honest. It's a little bit too long. The hide's going all the way, or the feathers are going all the way back past that hook. So I'm going to take just a little bit off here. I want just a little bit off of that. That blade is about shot. Okay, so I'm going about a quarter of an inch back from where my original tie-in point on the back hook was. And you can see these fibers right here are ending at about the back hooks bend so this is going to allow for a ton of motion it has good coverage the whole way back and when this thing's in the water man there's nothing else that swims like it I'm telling you this thing is a phenomenal fly um, so much motion with this and it has caught some really big fish for me for a lot of folks over the years um, what I typically do with these I know I don't know if the original called for like pheasants rump feathers or whatever what whatever color to offset to put a little throat on here um, I typically just go with some senos I put some red laser dub on here I get that secured into place Make sure it's centered up for me. You have a couple of wraps, pull that tight, and now the rest of this is gonna be ram's wool. We still have plenty of room to put our collar in. We still have plenty of room to get to form a head right here and then in front of the eyes as well. So with that, we're gonna go with the ram's wool, and this is an actual patch of ram's wool here. This isn't the synthetic, which I started using a lot more than what I had in the past. Um, it's just more consistent. It's easier to work with. Some of this ram's wool is absolutely phenomenal. Some of it, it's the luck of the draw and you wind up getting some really tough material to work with. I found that the longer that the materials are, the tougher it is to form a good clean head. But if you clean these out enough and you're not tying in a huge clump at a time, 
you're typically all right. But like I said, the other stuff is a little bit easier to work with. All right. So now we're going to measure this out. Before I do that, I want to cut my red right there. Get that out of the way. Now I'm going to measure this out. And I want this collar going back to the point, between the point and the barb of my hook. And I'm just going to tie that in. Get one, two, three secure wraps. I'm going to stand this up. And because this stuff's so long, I'm not going to fight this. I'm just going to cut that right there and get that out of my way. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're not using a collar on the bottom though. This is just going to be a straight piece of ram's wool underneath here. Take and trim that out. It's a little bit heavy. I want to clean that out some more. And there we go. You can see there, when we're not using a ton of material. Um, just enough to get us good coverage throughout this. So now we're going to go underneath here. And I'm going to set that in place. I'm going to peel this one back. One, two. I'm going to pull tight. And then just give a few more secure wraps throughout that. Now I'm going to take another piece. And this is something that I do a little bit different than other folks that I see tie these. Um, if you guys watched these videos before, anything working with rams wool, I do these. I do this technique a lot. Um, I take a generous amount, probably about what I would use for the top and bottom combined. And that thing's coming out again. And then I just take this and I clip the front off I work my fingers right through this to where it opens up and you have a nice 360 evenly distributed patch of ram's wool right there. So now I work that around my eyes and I go one, two, and I'm tying this directly behind my eyes and then I peel this back and then same thing. one two, and then I work my way to the front. That just gives me fuller coverage along or on my back half. Sometimes I've found if you get a little bit too sparse there in the back, you wind up with these gaps and everything, and it's just frustrating to see those gaps in a, in a wool head. So now we're just going to repeat this process all the way up to the front. I'm not taking as much material as I did before, mainly because if I take too much, it's going to be tough to get that secured right down to the hook. And that's when you wind up with those gaps that we talked about, which don't make anybody happy. And I can see already that this this material here is going to fight me a little bit. I'm going to have to really work this one to not have any gaps. Same thing on the bottom. I'm going to try and work with this stuff that isn't all twisted up. Clean that out. It's actually looking a little better. Looking a little better. We're going to go underneath on this one. Just get one, two. Secure that. Now you can see we have just a little bit in the front here. This is where it's up to you. If you want to add more wool or not, 
typically I don't. Um, if I feel good with the with the wraps that I have in here, I'm not going to add any extra wool. If I feel that I'm not going to have any gaps, I take a quick look at this. Everything looks pretty clean to me. I'm not going to. Um, but because this stuff is a little bit more sparse, I'm going to double up what I did between the eyes here. And I'm just going to get a little bit more material to go in here. I didn't like the way that that was looking. So I'm just going to open this up again, throw this material in here, and it's very sparse. Um, I don't want a ton of material because the one thing that you don't want when you're tying these wool heads is for it to be so compact with ram's wool that you can't, it, it won't allow water to get in between. Like it's so compact it almost acts like a cork. So make sure that you keep these nice and loose and I can see that that one's going to that's going to help pretty good right there. You can see I didn't throw a ton of extra material in there, but I had just enough to where it made that head a little bit more full, but it's not to the point where it's compact. Like I can take any portion of this and squeeze down on it. It's all compressible. It's not to where there's so much wool in there that it's going to force it to float almost. So now we're going to go and just run our bodkin through all of this. We're going to pick this stuff out. Work this around the eyes. Just clean this up real good. And we're going to start trimming. When I trim these, I always start right in the front. I find them with my scissors. And I'm actually going to swap out the scissors here. This makes it a little bit easier. They're a little bit longer and they're a little sharper too. There we go. And then I just start creating the overall shape on this top. Just getting some of this out of the way. I don't want a ton of material in there. It's a lot easier to trim this when you have a few rough cuts out of the way. With the bottom, the only thing I'm really concerned about is that I don't hit my uh, laser dub there to start. And I just take those basically flush with the eyes for now. I'll adjust those a little bit here as I go, but to start, I want those just, just two flush cuts right underneath there to where I have exposure in my eyes. I can start to see, you can see underneath, I can start to see that throat that I tied in, and then I'm making the rough cuts on the head here. All right, so I have basically my overall shape that I'm after. Um, there's there's a mess up here at the top, and uh, we're gonna fix that here with a couple of quick cuts. Let me keep my vise from spinning. I want to just get my shape on this one as well. Now, what I'm gonna do with that to make this easier is I'm going to pull this out of the vise and I'm going to take and trim this. Let me make sure that I'm in the frame there. I'm going to take and trim this against the grain which allows me to take a good chunk of the excess material out but I can still keep my overall shape. A lot of this stuff that's in that collar, I don't really want there because it's a little bit too bulky. So I want to lighten out that collar just slightly. And then I'm going to take, see if both of my sides are even, which right now I'm not. I want to take and just trim this right here. 
just to get my shape a little bit more close to how I want it. Now I'm going to throw this back in the vise. And I still have a little bit of work to do on all of this wool. So I'm going to go back to the other scissors here. I'm going to make sure that I can see my eyes. That's, a st that's how I start. I always want to see these eyes. I'm just going to trim out around them a little bit. And then there's some fine tuning down through here. I really want to bring this. I want to be able to see this body and that throat. So what I'm going to do is just make some quick trims right around here, right around those two sections. I'm going to bring this underneath section into shape a little bit. I'm just going to cut that off square. Now I can see that throat a lot, a lot better. It's a lot cleaner. But I still want a little bit of this out of there. The head's starting to come into shape for me a little bit. It's still a little on the bulky side, so I'm just going to take and trim this down slightly throughout. And yeah, I'm going to take this out one more time. You can shut it off right now if you want. All I'm doing is just fine tuning this trim. Completely up to you guys. You won't hurt my feelings. I just wanted to take a little bit of the roundness out of the top of that. Got a little bit bulky for me. Um, just wanted to take a little bit of that out. There we go. I'm going to live with that for now. I'll probably still do a little work once the cameras go off, but there it is. There is Kelly Gallup's articulated butt monkey. Um, give that a quick spin so you can see everything right there. I'll take and touch this up with a little bit of thread. And we are done. That's going to wrap this one up. As always, if there's any questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.